All right, Shalom. All praise unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahaf, Dash. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world eagerly calls God. Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten Son, whom the world eagerly calls Christ. In the name of the Holy Spirit, Mashin Yahkabat, Lahaza Koyim, Shah Yashaala, Gawala Rakab. As double honest to the apostles and elders, a great millstone. Uh, and uh, Shalom Wan Wakasa, Lahabakiar. It's peace and love to the house of David, the elect, uh, Habayah Dawada. All right. Um, and uh, much love, uh, Shalom Wa Hab Laha Awakim Wabanyum. All right. So mu much love to those uh, few sisters and children listening to humility. All right. Um, Salaki, hold on. Oh, no. All right. Hey, see, I mean, I, see that didn't, I know this is throwing off of the spirit a little bit, but see, this happened to me in the past two days, whereas um, the, uh, the, these Edomites, man, these so-called white men, they believe me to be somebody else, you know? Actually, that was a Jake lady, a Salaki, I don't want to bear false witness, that was a Jake lady, but just now, so I got thrown off because an Edomite guy, you know, he was like, oh, I thought you were somebody else. They assume that we all look alike, man, you know? And the children of Israel, we don't all look alike, man. There's a, a big distinguished uh, difference between us, all right? You know? And sometimes people just say shit like that to, because you seem like, you know, they, they, they feel the light of the Lord, man. You know, Lord willing with us, man. But they feel the light of the Lord, so they, they want a reason to speak. They want a reason to talk to you, you know? Um, but anyway, jumping back on the spirit. So uh, this lesson, I'm, I'm going to entitle it, uh, The Body of the Elect Shall Say, uh, uh, here am I, send me Okay, and I have that for, for a specific reason I was going to name it, here I am, send me uh, Originally But, you know, it's not a The thing is, a lot of times when you read in the scriptures It's not about one individual Alright, it's about the whole body It's about the elect, it's about Yahweh It's about Yahweh Shad Okay, so it's not about one individual So it's a, it's a body, man So that, that one individual is the body And Yahweh Shad uh, is the head, man Okay, so uh, I'm going to start off with that scripture. Actually, you know, it's a good, uh, good starting point. All right, because this is the spirit that the, the prophets come in. You know, even at times when we, you know, you might not feel like doing something, you might not feel like putting in the work. Hey, a prophet is going to prophesy, man, and there's nothing that they can do about it. All right, uh, and I'm going to get that. I'm going to get a story on that as well. You know, you brothers in the know, you already know. Uh, which which book I'm talking about, but I'm gonna start with this. And this is Isaiah six and eight. It says, uh, "Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, all right. So the voice of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem is saying, whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. All right. So hey, that's the spirit that the men of the Lord got to come in, man. All right. Who who's gonna go forth into the children of Israel? Who's going to go forth into uh, the highways and the hedges? Who's going to go forth to the heathens and proclaim the Heavenly Father's doing and proclaim his will? Okay? Who's going to do these things? Are the, are the other nations going to do this? Are uh, two-thirds going to do this? No. Only the uh, elect men are going to go forth and do it. Because even the one-third, you know, they're following after Yahweh Bashimi al uh righteously, all right, to the best of their abilities. But at the same time, the only ones who are going to say, here I am, send me, are the elect, uh, the 144,000 men. All right? It's a, it's a spiritual, uh, it's a holy thing that the Heavenly Father has put upon his men because those are the, uh, found, those were the original spirits that were created. All right? So their spirit is going to go, go ye forth uh, in the name of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Okay? Uh, this is uh, uh, Isaiah 6 and 9. It says, and he said... Go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. All right, so that you can also read that, and, um, you know, I'm going to get that as well. Uh, because that's in the old, you know, this is how you know Yahweh Shai, he followed after the prophets, so to speak. Because, of course, he was here before all of them. But so to speak, he, he, he quoted many of the prophets. And he did that because prophecy had to become fulfilled through his word. And this is how you know 
another way Salakia, that Yahweh by, that Yahweh Shai was spoken of in the Old Testament okay this is these are all things uh, according to the will of the Heavenly Father that's being sanctioned and that's being ordained in the earth uh, today okay uh, so I'm gonna read uh, this is Matthew 13 and 11 he says uh, he answered and said unto them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of heaven but to them it is not given all right to know the mysteries of the heavens were only given to uh, a specific people all right they weren't given unto everybody on the face of the earth oh it's recording that side so you might want to walk this way yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i appreciate it <laughs> you know so uh that that verse it, it speaks about only a, a certain uh people that will be given uh the understanding of the heavens the understanding of the the mysteries of the kingdom the understanding of the bible okay and uh and see that that was spiritual what just happened just now okay because what did i read i said matthew uh, 13 and 11 he answered and said unto them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom but unto them it is not given okay so this lady was walking by uh, like it's a side I'm standing on a sidewalk right now and it, usually I try to find like an area where there's a bench or a park somewhere I, I can be away from people you know so people don't interrupt like that but nonetheless that was spiritual what just happened as I was reading that verse she said I'm trying to do the right thing but I don't know which way to go <laughs> and she was a uh, mo I mean I'm speaking carnally here. Uh, she presumed to be an Edomite, you know, uh, not knowing her, her true spirit. But nonetheless, so the, the, it says the kingdom, the, the mysteries of the kingdom is given unto you to understand. All right. And so she said, I, I don't know which way to go. You know, uh, I'm trying to do the right thing. That's because it's not given unto the heathen to understand the scriptures, man. They're not going to know which way to go. Two thirds aren't going to know which way to go, man, because they're not going to seek the old paths. They're not going to follow after Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Okay, so the Lord sends forth men to proclaim His word, and the men of Israel to proclaim His His uh, His will. All right, read in verse twelve. It says, "But whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, him shall be taken away, even that he has." All right, so the Lord has given men uh, His will. He's given them His knowledge and understanding. All right, so and that, that it speaks about uh, the talents that the Lord gives you. All right, if the Lord gives you His Word, if the Lord gives you certain abilities, if the Lord gives you understanding of the Scriptures. All right, you gotta. Uh, he says, "Occupy till I come," and you gotta double that, man. All right, you gotta triple that. You gotta tenfold that, man. All right, because the Lord gave you a precious gift to know His Word. So what you gotta do? You gotta go onto the highways and the byways. You gotta uh, follow the laws to the best of your ability. You gotta have faith. You got to uh, do videos. These are the things that you got to do in order to receive the good graces of the Heavenly Father and His Son. Okay? Because He gave it. It says, what does it say? Which, um, how does it go? Which much, with much power comes great responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility. All right? And is this not the greatest power that has ever been given men? All right? To know the mysteries of the Bible, to know the mysteries of the kingdom, to know the understanding of the Heavenly Father. All right? Verse 13. It says, therefore, speak I to them in parables because they see not and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. All right. So they don't understand. They don't get it because it's not given unto them. All right. They're not going to know which way to go. They're not going to have understanding of the scripture. So you got to come in that stead of Lord, here am I, send me because he opened your ears. He opened your eyes to understand your heritage, your culture and who you are, you know, uh, verse 14. Because they're going to be blinded. The two-thirds are going to be blinded, and heathen even, even are going to be blinded. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. So they can see. They, they literally have eyes. They literally have ears. All right? But that doesn't mean that they can hear, and that doesn't mean that they can see, and that doesn't mean they're going to perceive the things of the Scriptures. All right? Verse 15, For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart, and they should be converted, and I shall heal them. So the ones that are going to be healed are the elect of Israel, because they're the ones who are going to open their eyes. They're the ones who are going to, uh, that's what it says, to uh, bind up the brokenhearted, to, uh, to heal, all right? It says, I should heal them, all right? This is a healing process that we're doing, because the nation of Israel has been greatly wounded, all right? has been greatly wounded from our head to our feet, man. All right? By uh, the spirit and power, Yahweh, so that we may know uh, wickedness and righteousness, 
but also because of our oppressor, man. The so-called white man has been uh, beating us, tormenting us, physically, psychologically, emotionally, mentally, financially. Everywhere we've been suppressed as a people. The so-called, the children of Israel, the so-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics, and those of confusion of face. And that they have been suppressed more than any other nation, okay? I can't make this video too long because uh, I only got 20% left. You know, I just want to do it in the spirit. But verse 16 says, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Okay, so that was what was mentioned in Isaiah the sixth chapter, all right? He says, for, uh, you know, Lord, here am I, send me. Okay, so before I get uh, the scripture that I was talking about, let me get Wisdom of Solomon uh, 7. This is William, Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 20. I started at 24. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. All right? So that, that's how great wisdom is. All right? And wisdom is not given unto everybody. All right? So it says... Uh, uh, for the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and the beginning of wisdom. Okay, so you got to have that fear. And the only people who are going to fear him in this time right now are the elect of Israel. All right, but when he returns, that's when all the other nations shall fear. All right, it says, uh, for she is the breath of the power of the Most High and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. Hey, so, <laughs> hey, that's the pure breath of Yahweh Shai, of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So you can't defile wisdom. <laughs> wisdom can't be taken away these scriptures can't be truly tainted man because it's by the it's the breath it's the living thing of the heavenly father it's the spirit all right the great comforter it's the spirit of yahweh it says for she is the brightness of everlasting light the unspotted mirror of the power of god man all right so if you got a mirror man it got spots on it you want to clean it off all right that's this world man totally tainted you can't see all right but this is an unspotted mirror man all right, uh, uh, you don't matter how much mud you throw on it, it just can't, the the water won't stick, man. The the dirt won't stick. All right, because it's unspotted beauty of the heavenly Father and the image of His goodness. All right, it says, and being but one, this is the point, and being but one, she can do all things, and remaining in herself, she maketh all things new, and in all ages entering into holy souls. You see that? So the, the wisdom is going to enter into holy souls. And holy uh, goes back to uh, kodash, which means separate and set apart. Okay? So the uh, wisdom is separate and those holy souls, those men, those elect, uh, the women and children, though elect from the foundation of the earth, they're going to be holy souls, separate and set apart from the rest of the world. All right? It says, she maketh them friends of God and prophets. All right. So be, to become a friend of the most high, you have to have that wisdom that entered into your holy soul. But everybody does, doesn't have a holy soul and the breath of the heavenly father can't move into them. It says, for God loveth not. Oh, man, this is beautiful. For the most high loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. All right. And that's a beautiful. I got to remember that one. Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 28, man. For the most high loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. So if you don't have wisdom, the most high don't love you, man. Point blank period. If you're not a holy soul, the most high don't love you. All right? Point blank period. Okay? Let me get a, I got a couple more I want to get. Let me get Sirach 36 and 16. This is Sirach 36 and 16. It says, reward them that wait for thee and let thy prophets be found faithful. All right? So the men that say, here I am, send me, they're going to be found faithful in the eyes of the heavenly father. They're going to be found faithful in the eyes of the Lord. All right, they're going to be getting given that mercy. Okay, the prophets to prophesy or prophets, I believe, is Nabayam. All right, to, to say before the seers, the men of old, the, the ancients, man. Okay, and that's why we always say, Lord willing, we those men because we're showing the fruits of, of being a prophet, we're showing the fruits of being the elect. All right, but no man knows, uh, you know, we we we, we got to make our calling and our election sure to show uh, to prove to the Heavenly Father that this is what we want. And this is what we seek after. Okay? So now I'm going to get the book of Jonah. Because I just want to prove the point that no matter who you do, who you are, and where you go. Matter of fact, I'm going to start with this one. This is Amos uh, 7, and I'll start at 12. Also, Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go flee thee away unto the land of Judah, 
and there eat bread and prophesy there. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel and it is the king's court. Then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. All right. Hey, so he, he, Amos said he was no prophet, man. So that's the way that we were in the world, man. You know, my friends uh, in the world, when I, before I found out about the truth, you know, one of my friends uh, made a made a uh, one time we got in an argument and you know he was like nigga you ain't no prophet i remember him saying that you know and that's because the wisdom of the heavenly father has always been shown regardless if i was in the truth or not man but nonetheless in that time i would have told i would have told uh anybody like yeah i'm not a prophet you know now I'm, I'm not a man of the lord but now that's different man the lord converted my soul the lord is converting our souls and he's healing us and turning us back to him okay so he says i what i was no prophet Neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. It says, the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said unto me, go prophesy unto my people Israel, man. <laughs> so that's the same way we were in the world, man. Herdman, you know, uh, 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 gatherer of sycamore fruit, you know, working, uh, going to school, you know, working for Esau, benefiting ourselves put money in our own pockets but now we're trying to stack up our spiritual shekels man all right we used to say i was no prophet all right but now the lord took me and said <laughs> go and prophesy unto my people israel all right so the lord takes you man it's not optional all right if you're one of those holy souls you ain't got ain't nothing you can do about this man all right you're gonna do the work of the heavenly father and that's what's gonna come first that's what's gonna be on your agenda that's what's gonna be on your plate that's gonna be your uh your love that's going to be your affection, okay? The scriptures and wisdom and Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man, okay? It says, uh, now therefore hear thou the word of the Lord. Thou sayest, prophesy not against Israel and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac, all right? So he, he you know, uh, Amos had to prophesy against Israel and against uh, the uh, heathen, man, all right? That's why he has a book on it, okay? Uh, let me get... What was that I wanted to get? Um, oh, John. That's what it was. The water you have about Shemar Shah. The spirit will bring it back every time, man. That ain't your memory. <laughs> you know, sometimes you, you will forget a scripture and you think that's your memory. Nah, man, that's the spirit that clicked in, man. <laughs> you know, this is John 15 and 16. Matter of fact, I'm going to start at uh, 14. Ye are my... Oh, ooh, beautiful. I'm going to start at uh, 11. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. All right? So we got to love a brother the same way we love Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right? Because if you hate your brother, the, the spirit of the Most High abideth not in you. All right? It says, uh, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. All right, so Yahweh Shai, he laid down his life for his friends, man. All right, for the elect of the nation of Israel. He laid down his life. He says, greater is no love, man. That's the greatest love there is, okay? And th th that's why now we got to show that same great love for our friend, our big brother, our Lord, Yahweh Shai, man, okay? It says, uh, ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. All right, and so in the world, people will read that and think, you know, hey, if your friend able, like, hey, take the trash out, you know, Jay could be like, hell no, nah, man, you know, and buck up. But the Lord said, if you do so whatsoever, I command you, because the things he's commanding are not things that are unprofitable unto you. That's the thing. He's commanding us to uh, to prophesy to the Israelites. He's commanding us to prophesy to the nations. He's commanding us to love one another. He's commanding us to uh, bring in the will of his father. Okay. Those are the things that he's commanding us to do, to follow the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of our ability. So he's commanding us to do righteous things uh, of, his, of his father, okay? To do righteous things that has been preordained since the beginning of time. He's not telling us to go out and shoot people up and be wicked and uh, have sex with men's wives, all right? So to become a friend of the Heavenly Father, okay, you're, you're doing after the things that he, he said in, in perfect, in perfect uh, sincerity and charity, okay? Uh, verse 15 henceforth I call you not servants 
for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. All right, so the children of Israel, the, the words are going to be made known unto us, man. These scriptures have been opened up in these last days to be made known unto the elect. Okay, he's made his words, of, because if you read uh, Revelation, the fifth chapter, it says, no man was worthy to open the seals of the book. But Yahweh was, man, the lamb. He was worthy because he was a man with a lamb without blemish. <laughs> man, the water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh that gives you chills, man. That no man on this earth was found worthy to open that book, man. But our Lord was, man. The Lord we, we serve, man. The living power, man. The water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh it says, uh, ye have not chosen me. So I'm going, this is going back to uh, when the Lord took Amos, all right? The same way he took us out of the world. Uh, John 15 and 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, and he may give it you, man. All right? So the Lord say, hey, he, we didn't choose him, man. He chose us. How glorious is that, man? And he says he ordained us. And I would look up that word ordained, but I'm using my phone right now, you know, but that means he specifically chose us. He's granted us power of knowing the scriptures that he chose us out of the world, man. The ch all of Israel was ultimately chosen, but the elect are specific to this, man. We have been chosen out of the world, okay, to do the work of the heavenly father. It says, uh, that's your, and another thing, it says, bring forth fruit, that your fruit shall remain, okay? So what's happening in these other camps? What's happening in IUIC right now? It's crumbling apart. Men are leaving. Their fruit is not remaining, man. Their body is is being shattered, and, and their uh their higher uh uh their higher members and their organization are fleeing. Their fruit is not remaining because they have not been chosen by Yahweh Shai. They have been chosen of men. They have been chosen through wickedness and filthy lucre. All right. So now I'm gonna wrap it up because I got 10% left on this battery. I'm gonna get it on. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna end it off on uh, the book of Jonah. Hey, how you doing? So, uh, we're gonna find a book of Jonah because, hey, man, this this ain't this ain't about what you want to do and your personal feelings and uh, how how you want things to be done. This is through the will and power of your how about Shemiah Shah. All right, this is uh, Jonah. I started at one and one. And now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, "Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it." For their wickedness has come up before me. All right, so that's what we're sighing and crying against Babylon now. Babylon is Nineveh too. All right, but it said the difference between Nineveh and Babylon. Babylon not gonna get themselves together because Nineveh was a city of Israelites. All right, and so Israel, the Israelites, they, after they heard uh, Jonah come unto them, all right, they repented and they fasted. The king ordered that everybody fast and repent, and they did that. But that's 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 spiritual because that's the elect. Okay. The city of Nineveh was, uh, was going to be the elect, but you, uh, the wickedness of Nineveh is uh, here in America to this very day, man. All right? So it says, cry unto them. And that's what we're doing. We're sighing and crying unto it. It says, but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down unto it and go with them into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So Jonah flew. He fled from uh, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushua. He thought that it was a way that he can escape from doing his work and doing his will. All right? And so I'm not going to read the whole story. It's a beautiful story. I love the story of Jonah. But for the sake of uh, my battery time, I'm going to jump to the point. Uh, this is Jonah 1 and 17. It says, uh, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. All right? And so through the Spirit, you know, I believe that to have been a, a Leviathan, you know, but it could have been a whale. But nonetheless, uh, it was a very large beast. And that's it says, uh, you read back on it, it says, uh, great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. All right. So and he even says, uh, that's why the, the Lord said, you shall have no, uh, you have this, all ye wicked and perverse generation. You shall have no sign, but the sign of Jonah and the sign of Jonah was um, him being in that, that beast of that belly, that, uh, the uh, belly of the beast for three days and three nights. And so that's the same way how the, the Messiah, how he was resurrected on the third day, okay? And then how in this last day, this third day now, the men of Israel, 
all right, are standing up to do the will and uh, the power of the heavenly father and his son. Okay. Jonah two and one. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his power out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell cried I and thou heardest my voice. So that's also how you know that hell isn't a place upon the earth where people go to burn forever. All right. He said he was in the belly of hell, man. All right. Because he felt he was going to die. He was in. And also that was a, a, a condition. OK. Hell is a condition. All right. It's a condition of uh, of being depressed, oppressed in servitude. All right. You're in a position of hell. OK. But it's also to mean grave. The word hell goes back to grave, which uh, sh which is uh, Shawal or Shawal. It might be uh, Shawal, you know, Shawal, Salaki, Shawal. All right, that, that's how you say hell, okay? And so that's the grave. That's the grave, man. So he thought it was over for him, man. Being in the belly of the beast for three days and three nights, he said he cried his affliction unto the Lord, and the Lord heard him. So the Lord is hearing the elect of the nation of Israel. All right? So uh, jumping down, uh, Jonah 3 and 1, and the word of the Lord came into Jonah the second time, all right, after he was redeemed out of the belly of the beast, arise, go into Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it, preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went into Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord, Yehovah Shem Shai. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey and he cried and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. All right. So he, hey, he's, the Jonah went out crying. Hey, what did the Lord, he, he wanted to go against the Lord and go his own way. The Lord said, nah, bring that ass here, boy. <laughs> You know, and so once he once Jonah cried out and plead for the affliction that he was in, man. All right, the Lord will afflict you if you don't want to do what, he, what, what his will is, man. And he's going to bring you back because he's chosen you. So you're going to do the will of the Heavenly Father regardless of you see fit to do so or not, man. It's not our will. It's not about us, man. It's about the Heavenly Father, okay? Because he's chosen us and he's ordained us, man. So if he's giving you a certain talent, all right, you got you to gotta make the most of it, man. You got to occupy. You got to watch and pray, man. You got to fast until the Lord returns. Okay? Because this time is now, man. And the Heavenly Father is on his way, man. You know? Jeremiah, what is that? Jeremiah 4 and 7 or 4 and 17. It says the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way, man. All right? And we're afflicted right now. Okay? And they shall think to wear out the saints, man. All right? But they, they, the Lord is going to have, he's not going to have his soul. He's going to have us delivered out of this place. But nonetheless, my point in, in his message was, uh, the voice of a prophet and the spirit of a prophet is going to say, here am I, send me, man. Even if you don't want to. At some point after that affliction, after the Lord gets your spirit and your mind together, all right? After you come out of this world and come out of your wickedness, follow the laws to the best of your ability and believe in his grace and his faith, all right? Hey, you're going to say, Lord, here am I, send me, man. All right? That's the spirit that every man of the Lord needs to be coming in. That's the spirit that uh, Yahweh Bashem Yahusha is putting forth in the earth because uh, Joel 2 and 28, what does it say? Uh, I start in 27, it says, he shall pour out his mist and the children, uh, I mean, he is in the midst of the children of Israel and he shall pour out his spirit into the earth, man. And his men are going to prophesy. His the, uh, young men are going to have visions. You know, his young men and women are going to prophesy. Shall, old men shall dream dreams. All right, the Lord is pouring out his spirit into the earth and that's why all of these things are coming to pass and all of these uh, different uh, wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and famines, all right? And the uh, prophet in Jeremiah 28 and 8, it says, uh, the prophets before me and the prophets of old prophesied both against great kingdoms, uh, great countries uh, of war, evil, pestilence and famine, man, and destruction, okay? That's what the, uh, the prophets do, man. All right, they, they come in the spirit of here am I, send me, man. They don't come in a uh, wicked demonic spirit, want to do everything in their own belly, just trying to get some money, just trying to see the easy way out. All right, that, that, that's wickedness and that's weak, man. The Lord ain't looking for no weak men, man. The Lord is looking for strong men in the spirit. All right, I ain't talking about strong physically, man, because we in this weak ass bodies right now. I'm looking for strong men in the spirit, man. You got brothers out here with all different types of ailments. But nonetheless, they got strong spirits, man. And they're going to be able to overcome this shit. And those are the main men <laughs> that's going to have spiritual powers, man, to why, uh, Lord willing, man. All of those brothers who got the physical infirmities. And you got brothers out here with uh, on, uh, on crutches. You got brothers out here uh, uh, on, on canes. You got men in wheelchairs. 
all of these things, man. The Lord might put spiritual powers on, the, on these men in these last days, man. In these last times to, to show forth his power. Okay? So I got to be at uh, probably like 2% now. So Tawadi Yahal Bashim Yahal for let me get this message out. Uh, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises, infinite honor, and glory unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rechakwadash. Uh, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David, the elect. Your call, your call, your call. Here am I, Lord. Send me. All right? To you, I say Shalom.